keep you reinstated. It fascist pig motherfucker, this is lazy, irrelevant, fucking administrative, fucking bureaucrat. You're stealing fifty fucking thousand dollars away from me. You're taking fifty thousand dollars in two and a half fucking years of academic record of hard, good academic, straight fucking A's. And what was the fucking point? Why did I do all those service hours, all those volunteering, all that bicycle riding? Why did I do any of that? All that paper? Why did I ever submit to any of you motherfuckers? I should have never listened to the first time when you all fucking laughed at me. I should have never took the first step in the fucking class. Kiss my fucking ass, you fucking Here, piece uh, of shit motherfuckers. You're stealing because I want to talk about the 1855 No Nothing Riots. Because I want to talk about the 1855 No Nothing Riots. That's why you're gonna fuck me. You stupid fucking piece of shit. It was part of the curriculum. It's part of the AP fucking history. It's part of the fucking era. She's a lying piece of shit. It didn't matter. There was no fucking reason except for she's fucking boss and I'm this fucking slave. There was no discussion. No discussion was had. She didn't want to have a fucking conversation. That's all I wanted from Julie Chance was a fucking conversation about the 1855. No nothing rights. But she was such a fascist piece of shit. She wouldn't even have it. She called these ass and these motherfuckers just stole fifty thousand dollars away from me. That are too short. Enter. Wait, what's the spell? That was T oh T shirts that are too short. How do you spell T shirt? T E A. T E. So he says he says I deleted the app on the TV and reinstalled it into work. And I said, okay, the cat wears T shirts that are too short. Question mark. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't understand why people are getting bullied. Because I'm the biggest fucking bully on the fucking playground. I'm the biggest fucking bully. Nobody can fuck with me. I'm Julie fucking... I'm the massa. I am the fucking head honcho. I'm the guy... I'm, this is Candyland, motherfuckers. This is Candyland. I'm running Candyland, and you bitches are my fucking slaves. Now get in line. Don't you dare talk about the 1855 New Nothing Riots. Don't you fucking dare. These white kids don't need to know about their origins. White is right. White is right. I get $55,000. That's my white privilege. I don't struggle. My struggle is to make their struggle harder. I will oppress up to the point of molestation. And no, they can't say shit. If, I, if they treated me the way I treated them, whoa, boy. I'm a hypocrite. I trust shit on them, but if they try to shit on me, oh, it'd be over for them. How dare them? No, oh, fuck them piece of shit motherfucking kids. Those kids don't know shit. Those kids only know the shit I tell them. They only retain 5% of the lectures, the boring lectures I fucking say. And they fall asleep, but I threaten them because that's how I motivate. I motivate by getting in their faces and yelling at them. And, and Kristen Harris loves you for it. Yeah, th yes, that's right. That's right. I am Kristen Harris. And if a teacher gets in a kid's face and pushes, you know, calls them names and yells at them in front of the class, that's good motivation. That's really good motivation. I don't you dare call that teacher a fascist. You defend that teacher. Of course he's, she's allowed to make fun of that kid. Yes, she's allowed to yell in his face. If he yelled at her... But if he yelled at her, if he got in her face and yelled at her, no, 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 we're hypocrites around here. We use the fucking tactics to manipulate people's behavior. You don't. You, you do as we say. You don't. We don't do what anybody else says. And no, don't you talk to me about your feelings. I don't care about nobody's feelings. I only want to smash you into subservience like a little bitch, okay? And you're a man, so you're supposed to listen to white women. Shut the fuck up, man. Shut the fuck up. I work, actually. 
Um, my volunteer hours, I was I put in 25 per class, so I was able to put in like lots of volunteer hours. Um, this was at uh, the Brown School. At the very end here, I have a different signature. This is where Pat Todd says, why is this sign differently, right? She was trying to say that I had forged it or some BS, you know, and she was talking to me like a like a total asshole, and I'm supposed to just sit there and accept it, and that's that's not cool. So these are all just copies. But uh, there's a couple of them missing, so I didn't, I wasn't able, I wasn't saving them like I should have been. They wasn't advising, they were sucky advisors. Seriously, they didn't make the good connections or contacts. They didn't tell you the things that they needed to be told. Um, basically, they just wanted you to fucking do the assignments and then get out of their face. Here at Wagner School, this was, um, this was Mr. Anderson, but there's also a lady there that was in her ESL class. That was actually the first observation, and I was, it was very, very fun. Uh, so... This was, you know, here's some more hours, 16 hours, 17 hours, St. Uh, Joseph Orphanage. I also taught uh, Sunday school at St. Joseph um, Academy. So here's some more. All this was with the uh, uh, classroom management class. So there's another, you know, 20 or so hours. Here's just a uh, how do you think he did type of thing. Right? Here's some more hours. Oh, which is... Here's some more at uh, Seneca High School in JCPS. So I had 20 hours here. All right, so another another 20 hours in a chemistry class. Here's uh, 18 hours that I did in the Brown School. Um, at Seneca High School, here's another 20, 20 and the 7 twelfths of an hour. Um, it was interesting, actually. She, Mrs. Reichmuth, versus... Um, the chemistry teacher were completely different. Chemistry teacher was laid back and sort of more like a hippie. She said she actually dated Gatewood Galbraith, right? And so she was, um, she was chill and she was more entertaining and fun. She was a benevolent dictator, whereas uh, Mrs. Reichmuth was not so benevolent. She was an absolute Nazi, and she was teaching Latin, so she's basically pushing herself into irrelevancy. You must yell at the kids. You must yell at them! That is rule number one in JCPS, Sparta University, that's my Ten Commandments! Yell at the kids, yell at the kids, yell at the kids, yell at the kids, yell at the kids! And yes, I tell every person that comes in here to always yell at the kids! Well, I don't think that's right. I don't think you should just be treating people like assholes. Ah, will you shut your mouth! You shut up! When I'm talking, you are silent! And yes, as a prospective teacher, you've got to learn to yell at the kids! You have to! Well, I'm not really, I want to build trust with them. I want to encourage, their, you know, uh, um, inspire curiosity. I want them to actually want to learn the material that we're presenting them. Oh, that doesn't even matter. Who cares if they're curious? You have to force this knowledge. The knowledge that I say is knowledge. My incorrect facts. you got to shove these incorrect facts into their throats. you got to tell them a bunch of lies. you got to defend white supremacy and violence and fascism. That's who... I am! I am Julie Nazi Fascist Chandler! Uh, Chancellor! <laughs> not Chandler, not... I'm not on the Friends, I'm... I'm just, you know, uh, 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 in school! Okay, I'm not... <laughs> I'm really... What I'm trying to say here is... I yell at kids! That is my job! That is my job description! It is JCPS's number one rule! You must yell at the kids if you're going to be a teacher! Only real teachers yell at kids! That's a rule! But that's, that's the first thing you're telling me. The first thing you're telling me is that I have to yell at the kids. That's, that's your philosophy. I have to yell at the kids. There's no way. There's no way Elizabeth Chancellor will think that this, or Elizabeth Rogers will think that this is right. There's no way. Well, I'll just give her a call. I'm just going to give her a call because I'm a crazy-ass bitch, and, and she's a crazy bitch, and we crazy bitches stick together. Well, crazy-ass fucking white women bitches are what rule the education system. Education system makes up 80% of the fuck. White women make up 80% of the education. We are the Leviathan. We are the monolithic. And we will fuck up your life if you're not obedient to us. You must be obedient. Straight A's means you're very obedient. That's what we're teaching here. We're not teaching knowledge. We're not teaching skills. We are teaching obedience. And to get that obedience, you must yell at the kids. That's a rule. In JCPS at Valley High, 
I am Julie Chancellor, and I am telling you that you must yell at the kids because that's what I believe. Me, Julie Chancellor, yes, yell at those stupid ass, shitty fucking kids. You must treat them like shit. Show them your fucking boss. Get them to comply 100%. Shut the fuck up. You write your damn notes. I don't give a shit about you. I mean, I love you, but I want you to do as I tell you to do like a fucking little bitch ass fucking slave dog. Now shut the fuck up, slave dogs, and get to work! So this is just a little peek of my library, which isn't all of it, but just to know that I'm a well-read man. My name's Toy Dominic speaking. Dominic, um, my name is Jonathan Masters. I got, I got a an issue, and I hope you can help me out with it. Okay. Okay. So, um, I called the Burstar's office, and I had asked them if I was to drop a class, what would happen if I could, you know, get any of that money back? And they had said, well, well how many weeks was it? And I was like, well, it's a fourteen week program. I was in it for a week, and. Therefore, I should have got probably most of it back, and that's what they told me. Yeah, yeah, you'll get your money back. Well, I went ahead and dropped the class, and then when now I'm trying to order my transcripts, and there's a hold on the account. So I don't know what that's about. All right, let me look it up. Okay. Do you know your ID? Burstar's office is a separate entity. They're connected with the business office. Um, and actually, at this point, we don't have a Burstar. We're in the process of trying to find one. Um, See, anything to influence of Irish Catholics, other immigrants. They want to purify the American politics, right? They were so racist, they hated Irish Catholics. Um, they were nativists, they hated Catholics. Uh, popular fears, they were scared that the Germans and the Irish were going to take all the jobs. Um, they're hostile, so it's basically like the Mexicans, right? They're living in their own enclave, they're speaking a different language, they're afraid they're going to steal their jobs. Um, hostile to Republican values controlled by the Pope. They thought the Catholics were being manipulated by the Pope. Uh, the many active from 1854 to 55, it strove to curb immigration and naturalization, but they met little success. Uh, the most prominent leader, leaders were ex-president Millard Fillmore. Party's presidential nominee in 1856 and uh, Massachusetts Congressman National P. Banks and former Congressman Louis Levin. So here's a citizen, know nothing, right? It's a nice strapping young white Protestant, white Anglo Protestant, right? The Native American Party, the American Party, the Know Nothing Party. Or he is or isn't? No. Right. Then it wasn't he Chris Hart. It was it was whoever is in charge of the Bursar. It was, that's a man's name. It was a female that talked to me, so that couldn't have been him. It was a female that talked to me. Well, Jamie Johnson, Melanie Owens at one point was our Bursar. Oh, okay. Um, and then uh, Jamie Johnson now is in the business office, and she handles... Is handling that itself. Um, I mean, but without knowing what they said or, or what the situation was. And the reason why it's called the Know Nothing Party because if anybody says, hey, what is this a political party about, then you're supposed to say, oh, I know nothing. So it's a secret society. Now, the uh, 1850s, this, um, this is when the Bloody Monday happened in Louisville. So August 6, 1855, it was Election Day. Protestant mobs attacked. Irish Catholic neighborhoods, and these riots grew out of the bitter rivalry between the Democrats and the Nativist Know Nothing Party. Multiple street fights raged, leaving 22 people dead. Now, I've heard reports of 100 dead, okay? Multiple street fights. I also heard they were burning the houses down. Much property damage was destroyed by fire. Five people were later indicted, but none were convicted, and the victims were not compensated. So, no victim, you know, a bunch of victims. Um, a lot of people, Germans, would move out of this town, but they're sitting there killing people, burning houses down, and Nobody was convicted. So mob violence, mob justice, if that doesn't sound like the Ku Klux Klan to me, and this is the per, uh, you know, the precursor before the Civil War had happened. So you don't think that these Germans and Irish are sort of pushing sentiment and the arguments. People are saying, you know, how, uh, um, I, I, I mean, it's online, so. Um, I'll just... Well, now let me go ahead and give it to you so that you don't have the wrong information, okay? All right. Uh, if you've got a pen and paper, just because I don't want, because you were, uh, had, that it, you had talked with, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Hart, and I just don't want you to have the wrong person. 
Um, is it G K U Z U O K A at Spalding.edu? That's correct. Uh huh. And her number, her extension is four three two nine. Yeah, I got that. Okay, Dominic, man, you've been awesome. I appreciate you. They're not American. How dare they? You know. So you, you, you what are you a German lover? What are you an Irish lover? Somebody asked me if I was an Obama lover. <laughs> It sounded like, you know, are you a nigger lover? Am I, are you an Obama lover? Are you some sort of Obama lover? Boy, is that what you are?